So I've had a number of requests for demonstrations of more desktop oriented activities. Uh, in this video, I'll show how to set up a persistent IRC client, uh, which takes advantage of the plan nine way of doing things and how to install a better web browser and how to watch YouTube videos. But first off a bit of a warning, and I don't mean this to scare anyone off. Plan 9 was created as a tool to be used in a lab. It is a research operating system, not a desktop operating system. It is not user friendly. It is engineer friendly. And I'm not saying this to mean that it's wrong to use Plan 9 or 9Front as a daily driver, uh, but the default install greets you with an empty gray screen. Um, it doesn't provide you with a desktop experience. It provides a blank canvas for those who want to craft a computing experience. Uh, if anyone would like to take these examples and dress them up with typical desktop widgets, libraries do exist to do that. Um, if you make a better looking IRC client, shoot me a message and I'll do a demonstration of it. Uh, but with that out of the way, uh, on with the show. So first off is IRC. Um, now the nice sort of abstractions plan nine provides means that a basic IRC client can be done with just a shell script. And the one that comes installed is exactly that. It's a shell script that opens up a port and starts sending text back and forth. Uh, but if you want to seriously use IRC, you probably want um, something that does a bit more. There is uh, IRC7 and a fork called IRCS, uh, which start up a file server and connect it to an IRC server. Um, it then logs everything locally, which can be read back using um, an IRC client and also can be parsed to find um, private messages and the like. Um, it's good practice to check anything you want to install. Let's see here. So check its make file because I found this one in particular um, we'll try to install stuff in the users bin and RC directory. Um, that means that whoever installs this particular program will be the only one that can access it. It doesn't get installed in the uh, system-wide bin and RC uh, directories. Um, so in the case of uh, IRCS, Type the command. We had a dash E, which will mean to run it um, using the TLS encryption system. Um, you then enter a, uh, a nickname and um, you can specify a password. You could put in a, um, a unique um, name for the serve you want to use, specify log files and all that, but I'm just going to go ahead and uh, use the defaults. So let's see, I'm going to use RC node All right. It says that it initialized okay. If we check serve, oops, not source. And we can see that it put a little IRCS into the serve window. So from here, we can do, um, so IRCS comes with its own um, text-based IRC client. It's another shell script, uh, but it has all the defaults that IRCS uses built in. So I'll just use it. And you put dash T for the room you want to join. 
be sure to use single quotes around the names with the um, pound sign or hash in them. And there it is. And I can reply back. And that's about all there is to that. Um, if I remember right, this one will store the defaults to just put everything into the temp directory. So yeah, it does put a IRCS in there. So you can go through there and actually look at the logs and stuff. Um, there's uh, when you fire up this uh, IRCX, there's also a dash B option to specify how much of the backlog you want to have dumped onto the screen whenever you use it. But there you go. You can IRC uh, from Ninefront. So next up is NS port, which is a port of NetSurf to Plan 9. Um, since web browsers are complicated beasts now, uh, be sure to follow um, all the instructions on the NS port GitHub page to get everything installed properly. And in this case, the default install puts it in the system bin directory so all users can use it. So, um, NetSurf is set up so that anything typed in the address bar that doesn't have an HTTP in front of it, so if I put in, will just automatically get sent to DuckDuckGo. So it uh, acts as a search bar. Um, there is a middle click menu, which does a variety of things, and this is where your paste and snarf will be. Uh, along with look, if you want to like look for a specific word. Um, you can also highlight and do mouse cording. Although if you're used to it cutting, you know, on the um, um, button one and button two part, it won't actually cut the text out. But it does... Uh, it does paste it. Uh, there is a right button, and this is where you can do exit from, along with a few other options. Uh, if you middle click, it will open in a new window. Oops. So, you know, this obviously isn't a full featured browser. Um, but if you've been having a hard time getting by on Mothra, uh, this does a, a much better job of uh, formatting pages. Um, runs pretty quickly. Um, and there you go. So there is something out there a little bit better than Mothra or the Abaco that's uh, used in Plan 9. So NetSurf won't play videos in the browser either, but it is still possible to watch YouTube and other videos. Um, in the case of YouTube, um, it's handy to grab the little identifying string. You know, it'll say, you know, www.youtube.com, something, something, and then there'll be an equals and a string of texts and stuff. So let's try that. Go back to NetSurf. And um, let's see, it's bringing my step. I think that's the free song you're allowed to play. Yep, yeah, that's the one. So obviously it doesn't work, but you can see this would be the little 
identifying string YouTube uses. So I'll go ahead and take that. So there is just like a, um, a YouTube downloader script you can get, but there's also this neat little application called NVI, um, which goes and grabs stuff from PeerTube and a few other places. Um, and lets you sort of gives you a, a list of stuff to try or different videos and audio formats to grab. So we'll try that one. It's NVI dash I, and then we put in a little string. It'll take a second to go out to the internet and find information on that particular video. And there it is. So it has a whole list of stuff you can grab. Um, so this option 18 is usually like the default, oops, easiest one to get. And I already did that. I had to go out of my way to make sure I got some stuff that YouTube wouldn't flag me for. So we'll move on next to treason. Oops, that's with an E, uh, treason. TMP, and it was... So as you can see, it does video, it does sound. Let's get something a little quieter here. And so Treason's fairly minimal right now. Um, it'll just start at the beginning and it will play. Um, if you know something about working with video files, I'm sure the maintainers would love patches to add pause buttons or jump to parts of the track. But as you can see, it does indeed play videos that you can fetch off YouTube. And these ones aren't even using a whole lot of CPU either. And this is like an old, uh, oh shoot, like a 4000 series Intel i5. Um, it's like a 10 year old Dell Optiplex. But yeah, there's no menus or anything, so you just hit delete to stop it. But uh, there you go. Some kind of typical desktop activities you can do on 9 front at least and uh, as always have fun <laughs>